Recording. What is going on with everybody, man? It is your boy, Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the Green Dungeon, giving it to your real raw record. And I have somebody on the other line. I'm let him introduce himself, man. Who do we have here today? My name is Alan Resnick, and I'm happy to be here. Hey, man, I am happy you're here. Uh, I, I don't say this often, but I've done over, I don't know, man, I'm 200 interviews in at this point, a lot of interviews. Uh, I can't think off the top of my head, but if I'm not mistaken, you got to be the most intriguing person I've interviewed so far. I've interviewed people who've, uh, who've rapped. I've interviewed people who do porn for a living. I've interviewed people who probably sell coochie and penis for a living. I've probably interviewed who, people who've probably killed people for a living. Uh, none more interesting than Alan Resnick. So I'm, I'm happy to have you on here, man. I'm surprised. I, I'm glad I can compete with murder and pornography. <laughs> Man, your your films, I feel like your mind is like damn near pornography, but it, it's so fucking interesting to me. And that's why I want to interview you, man. So I, I hope you got some time today because I got some questions, man, and I think you would have some answers for me. Uh, I'll try my best. I'm bad at answering questions. We'll see, man. We'll see. But before we get into this, how are you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm always a little sleepy, but other than that, I'm very good. How are you? I just woke up from a nap like 30 minutes ago. I knew I had to be energized for this. So I took a little power nap and I'm good, man. You big nap person? I like, I, I do like taking the occasional nap when I'm allowed, but I'm not, I don't always, I'm not always allowed to take a nap. Is that due to like uh, your busy schedule? Uh, it's due to, yeah, uh, answering emails and text messages. Mm. And sometimes people knocking on my door, um, but I would love to take a nap maybe right after this would be nice. For sure. So no nap today. So, so far. Not yet. No, no, no nap today and not much sleep in the night either. Why not? Is that also due to the schedule or you just can't sleep? Just can't sleep. Or I get, I get excited. Mm. And then I think about the thing I'm excited about and I'll just think about that a lot. Insomniac probably, or just your, your mind can't shut off. Uh, yeah, just, just brain, brain thinking too much, just thinking too much just getting too excited about whatever I'm excited about. Or sometimes I'm not excited and then I sleep like uh, really well. Mm. Is this ex a, was that a good interview qu answer? Great interview answer, man. You got a great interview hat. I like your hat, man. You got the yellow beaming hat right now. You compete with my bonnet, man. I, usually oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm the, yeah, with the best Ed wear. You got the, yeah. you, you with the, the yellow uh, cap right now, man. I like you're, that. You're, I, think you, I think you win. And the green background also, I think, is, is a nice. <laughs> with the grandfather nice. clock in the background. Too. Oh, yeah, grandfather clock. <laughs> what, that... what, brand of, what brand of grandfather clock is that, if I might ask? Uh, broken. That's the, that's the brand of grandfather clock. Let me see. It, looks... it, says, uh, it says regulator. That's what that is. A classic. Are you a grandfather clock guy? I I believe in my childhood home there was a regulator. Really? Yes, but uh, since then no. But maybe in the future I'll you find one. Have any one. clocks around the house right now? Uh, yeah, my I have a pretty cool clock. Let me see. I'll show you. Well, I have two cool clocks. Okay. This was, um, my wife made these clocks. Okay. There's this one, which was like an Ikea clock, oh. you know, like a little plastic clock, but she yeah. took the pieces out of it. Mm. And then she put the pieces of the clock in a um, cardboard box. Mm. So this is the clock. I don't know if the time is right, but it, yeah, it's moving. Oh, that's the little, those, those are the hands right there. I didn't, they blend in. That's crazy. Yeah, they blend in. So it's kind of hard to tell what it is, but these are the two clocks in this room. That's hard. I like that. I'll put these I thought they were like Twizzlers for a second. Those are, those are cool. I like those. No, these are clocks. <laughs> I, see, I like it. I like it. She does, does she make a lot of stuff? Like, is she like the, the handy person around the house? She's very handy. She makes a lot of things. She's made, she's, yeah, she makes all, a lot of weird furniture and toys and things in the house. Hmm. Um, and a lot of them are poor, poorly made. They will break, like she made a, a kind of uh, crazy chair that breaks when you sit on it. Um, but she is handy and she likes to make things. She likes to fix everything that mm -hmm. is broken, which is nice because I'm not good at that. So you're not a handy person. I just person. don't do it. Yeah. She's the handsy person in the relationship, basically. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's crazy because I feel like uh, during this quarantine, 
there's been a lot of stuff that you can learn, like either being handsy or things you can unlearn. And uh, for me personally, I had a lot of pros and I've had a lot of cons during this quarantine. And uh, I guess one thing kind of reverting back to the beginning of this, where you're talking about sleep, my sleep schedule is terrible now. Like just a lot of things have been thrown off and switched around since the quarantine. So my sleep schedule is terrible. Is this, you, is, does that affect you at all with your sleep schedule? Uh, no, no, but I'm, I'm wondering is with you, is that because you had things you had to do out in the world that then got canceled? So now you have no reason to keep a schedule? I'm a college student, so I was okay. going to school uh, physically every single day or every, you know, most of the days. And uh, now everything is online. So all of my mm -hmm. classes aren't even like mandatory Zoom meetings. I can do them when I feel like it. So you, Oh, you can like watch after the fact? I could, I just don't watch it all. I just, they just, they, it's like, it's uh, not required. Just do the work whenever you feel like it and bada boom, bada boom. That's so, very different from when I went to school. Where, where do you go? Uh, I'm just transferring. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida right now. So I'm just okay. transferring to our university. It's a university down here called University of North Florida. And cool. uh, yeah, man, just, just doing the classes like that. And also like, if I'm talking about like working or whatever, I, I write for like uh, magazines and things like that. So that's also a thing where I don't have to get up physically, you know, so I can just do that anytime I want to. So everything is messed me up. So I don't know if that has played a part of you not going to sleep at all, or is, is it always been like that with you? Um, I don't know if it's always been like that, but I've always worked towards not having a set schedule. Mm -hmm. um, like I, w I would always try to have jobs where I could work the least amount of time and live in, like I lived in Baltimore for 10 years, um, partly because the rent was so cheap and I knew a lot of people who were living in warehouse spaces and there was a good art community there, but the rent was so cheap. I could have a very part-time job and afford a lot of space to make things. Um, but my goal was always to have the least jobs I didn't like. And I, I never liked having a set schedule because I did like staying up really late. Um, so I was attracted to anything where I could just stay up all night and you know make things or think about things. I feel like that sounds so cool. And that's how I would operate. But now since this quarantine where, I don't know, everything is just like more hectic of, of my sleep schedule, also, my creative process has been like affected. I feel like I've been less creative during this whole thing. Uh, do you feel that or have you been more creative? It's mixed. I felt like when it started, I was, and I think a lot of artists felt this way where I was just like, great. This is what, if you work in visual arts, you're like, this is what I want. I want time. I want to not have to go out and do anything. I want to just be able to focus on making the things I like to make. And I always liked making things in private, like I said, late, late at night staying up. So it seemed like it might be good. And, and then I was a little surprised how hard it was to be productive. Um, and I guess lazy, it made me for a while. And it took me some time to get into um, getting back into making things. And then eventually I started to kind of figure it out. And now that I feel like the quarantining stuff is hopefully coming to an end. I've like have a lot of projects that all of a sudden are gonna take place in the next like, couple months and make me feel a little crazy. Are you in LA right now? Can you hear me? You cut out for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are, you, are, you, are you in uh, LA? Uh, yeah, I'm in LA. Can you hold on one second? Yeah, sure. clocks this is dina over here she yeah she made those clocks oh hey how you doing hi nice to meet you nice to meet you oh is it because he has a good clock yes that's why we're talking about it she <laughs> likes your clock i don't know if you can hear her i appreciate that that's nice I appreciate <laughs> that. um but yeah you you're saying you're in la right la but i was i was in baltimore for 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 like 10 years yeah for sure. Uh, so, but quarantine that happened when you're in LA, that when everything happened. Yeah, yeah. I've been in LA for like two and a half or three years. Two and a half, three years. So I'm in Florida when it happened. So I would imagine that very different approaches, very different. I think we probably seen very different things when it, when everything happened. So when it first happened, how was it out there? Well, I don't know about how the rest of society handled it, but LA is so pleasant. Like the wet, the weather is so pleasant. Um, and, it, and it was such a big shift for me from being on the East Coast where I was used to a lot of 
gray days and not beautiful uh, nature that I was like totally fine. I was like, I can be locked up in my house and go on walks in my neighborhood and feel pretty lucky. Um, in terms of like, the, you know, the, the rest of people's reaction to it, it seemed like people at first took it pretty seriously. And then pretty quickly, you know, you'd see a lot of maskless people walking around. Um, I don't know how, how that's been in Florida. I've heard, you know, different reports um, but what what is your experience of it been? Uh, if you wear a mask in Florida, they look at you like you're a pedophile. They're like, uh -huh. this is weird with a mask on. So yeah, uh, mask and not popular down here. I'm pretty sure LA has a mask mandate or California has a mask mandate. Uh, Florida does not have a mask mandate uh, at all. So you can't get in trouble for not wearing a mask. So very, very different. I had to go on a business trip to New York in October. And the approaches that I seen they take versus that we take right now completely different things so whatever you probably yeah. think of the opposite did you do you feel unsafe like going into stores or anything like does it are you worried about it um yeah well, i live with somebody who's like a cancer survivor so never trying to put them at risk or anything um yeah i have, I have friends who work at the cdc I have friends who are like doctors and things so i'm always staying up to date and uh, learning about it so i feel like i was forced to take this serious because i was around people who either were at risk in like you know being unhealthy or people who were just dealing with it firsthand so they were like yo you need to take this serious so yeah i've been taking it pretty serious since the beginning because that's the people i've been around so, yeah. yeah yeah same i i immediately was like if i get this i will die because i am generally very unhealthy yeah. i get sick so easy and and intensely that i was just like i have I will do anything to avoid this. So I feel like we've been as safe as we can be. For sure. So you haven't caught it at all? Any problems? No. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just, just, uh, just, I, I think it's interesting because like you said, when it first happened, a lot of the creatives, a lot of the artists, a lot of musicians, a lot of everybody was like, oh man, now we get time to just focus in on what we're good at. Or we can learn something even better, but it didn't work out like that for everybody. But you, um, like I said, I'm very interested to see what you came up with because you said in the next couple months we should be uh, expecting a couple things. And uh, I think that's a perfect transition just to dive into your work and how I found it, man. Um, uh, people say you got to put on thinking caps for certain stuff, have on a thinking bonnet because very confused with the first thing I've seen. Uh, before I even get into it, for the people who are watching this probably don't know who you are, how would you des who would, like describe what you do your background almost like, cause people are like, who the hell is Alan Resnick? Who's never heard of you? Like, who are you before we get into these things? So they know a little bit more about yourself just for a little bit of preference. Uh, I don't know how to answer that because I, I don't think I'm very good at talking about myself in that way or summarizing what I, what I do whenever I have to write like a, a, a bio or something official that makes me sound like good. I don't think I'm very good at, th at doing that, but, um, I just, I make videos and I do performance that's comedy. A lot of the time my videos have been arc comedy, but people will also find them to be scary or horror. Um, but I have a hard time focusing on any one thing. So I bounce around a lot between 3D animation and um, comedy, performance, and video making. Those are the main things that I will bounce around between. Um, but I've be, I went to school for just visual art um, and was very interdisciplinary and tried everything a little bit. And lately I've been focusing more on the video making, mostly out of opportuni financial opportunity. That like that was the thing that start, that got recognized or people were willing to give me some amount of money to do when in the past, you know, other things I pursued, it, I wouldn't get money for. There's like a bee in the house. I have to deal with the bee. Oh, dude, do, do your thing. Don't get, don't get stuck. Oh, it is, it's a big bee. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to try to, I don't know what to do. I, 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 I have uh, had bee attacks. I've had, when I was in high school, a bee flew up in my pant leg and no one believed me and it kept stinging my leg. And then I had to take my pants down at, in school and like stomp on the bee. So I have a thing with bees, but I'm going to try to get rid of the bee. How loose were your pants legs? They flew up your pants. They must, they must have been loose. I, I was probably wearing loose, loose, loose pants were very fashionable when I was in high school. 
Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, the Adidas. I'm going to try to hit the B with the, my, these other pants I have. I lost. Oh, there it is. Did you get it? Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, jeez. Get the heck out of here. I am so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, man. But I got, I got it. You're good. You're good. <laughs> it's got to be. This feels like this feels like one of your films. Feels like I'm a uh, put the B or some shit. Like it's like it's one of your films. It's cool. Uh, but no, I was gonna ask you. Ever did stand up before? I do. I've done a lot of um, pr- live comedy, but it's mostly presentational. Okay. Um, slideshow kind of TED Talk stuff, which then would turn into video performances, and. Uh, I was in a comedy group called Wham City Comedy. We would do these like U.S. tours and it would be a variety show. So we'd do like a group sketch and then we'd each have our own individual acts and then another group. And we'd show videos in between. And a couple times I tried, a couple times I would try to do stand up, but it was never, um, I was never good at being like earnest stand up. I always had to be kind of in character because I, I just didn't feel comfortable like talking about myself or real observations. And then once I, I was never confident with it is what I'm saying, doing stand up, And I got the opportunity to be on like a, what is it? It's not a, maybe like a showcase where to try to get into like one of these big comedy festivals, like in Montreal or something. And it was like, you know, like kind of a, a good opportunity for a stand up, but I wasn't taking stand up seriously. So I was kind of coming at it in the wrong way. And when I got there, all the other comedians, they've devoted their lives to doing stand-up and they were really good. And it was the only time I, I ever like fully bombed on stage so terribly because I, I was kind of making fun of stand-up. I wasn't taking it seriously. I was just kind of playing around in the format. And then I saw all these other people who took it so, so seriously and so good. It made me so incredibly nervous that when I went up on stage, like it was the only time like words didn't come out of my mouth. I would like start saying the jokes and like stumble and it was just very painful. Um, but I always, I always do admire stand up, and I've never been great at it. You're much more of a, basically you're much more of a, you, you like to explore characters and find the like, comedy within those characters. Yeah. And I like to, um, I like seeing things where I'm a little unsure of where it's going to go or, or if it's even like dangerous. And the comedy group that I was in, William City Comedy, we would often, you know, play with audience interaction and bring people up on stage in ways where it felt like maybe they were in danger, but yeah. they were never in danger. We always tried to be very safe. Almost like a, like wrestling almost sounds like. It sounds like, a, I mean, I've yes. been watching a lot of like old wrestling where they would go in the crowd and uh, you know, yell at the people, like almost attack them, but they won't, you know, they don't want to get sued or really hurt anybody. So that's yeah. always blurring the lines between reality and fiction is always, I feel like it never gets old. That's something that's always gonna be like interesting and intriguing to people a hundred years from now and a hundred years before. Yeah, I think that's the thing that makes me most excited when I see when I see a lot of any any kind of art form where I've seen it many times and I feel like I know what the format is and nothing can go wrong it can be good and i can appreciate it but it's never going to be as interesting to me as when i see something where i feel like i have no idea what might happen or could happen i said so are you more interested in that type of live performance versus writing a actual script and uh getting actors and directing everything which one i think uh, i guess piques your interest more right now in 2021 yeah. besides covid so you can't do live performances anymore, but just in general yeah, I do miss that. Um, it always, for me, depends on the idea, where the idea comes from. If, if, if it's or, like just an organic idea that pops into your head, I feel like that usually will dictate what format it will be in, you know, or, or, or you get inspired by some other context like, you know, um, TikTok or something, you know, whatever the, the social media format is. I mean, I mean, for me, like when YouTube was starting, it was like, oh, this is interesting. I can imagine being on YouTube and finding this, this or that, and that this would catch my attention. Or when you were just surfing through, through one of these sites, it's like this person's weird account is what caught your attention. Yeah. So 
for me, the context of the, you know, the, that's another way the idea can come out. And, and, and it also comes from opportunity, like, you know, with the Adult Swim things that I had the opportunity to pitch something for a specific 4 a.m. slot where they were doing more experimental things. And it became exciting to think about what, if I was watching TV at 4 a.m., if I couldn't sleep, if I was like in a hotel or something, what would make me stop flipping channels and actually sit and watch something? Um, so it's always, I always think the idea dictates that or the opportunity dic you know, allows you to come up with new ideas. Thank God I didn't watch uh, this. This house has people in at four a.m. in the morning. I definitely would have been praying. I was like, "What the hell did I just watch, man?" I would have been. Like, well, I'm glad I had lights on and everything. But uh, you know, if, before I get into that, I don't. I, I've always, I always suggest this to people who I think can come up with things on the whim and be very witty. And I feel like you can. Have you ever thought about doing uh, like? like trying some type of concept within public interviews. I feel like that may be something that you could, you could do something cool with, or maybe you have done it. I haven't, th I haven't thought of that. I, I mean, I've occasionally thought of, I do like the format and I do like shows where things that are a little more casual, where it's like two people are going to a place and talking, you know, there's a show that a lot of people like called Fishing with John just John Laurie would go just on fishing trips with different um, musicians and actors and, and directors and things. And, you know, it does something interesting with that format. I've, I haven't had any real specific ideas in that, but I, again, it's like, if someone was like, Hey, do you want to do an interview show? I feel like then I would start thinking, okay, well, what would be interesting in that, that format? That's just, um, it's easier for me sometimes to, to be given limitations or, or someone giving me a context and then I can play around within that and brainstorm. It's so many, it's so many like cool ideas and things you could do with that because I do public interviews and just like the excitement from just talking to somebody that you don't know what they're about to say, you don't know what you're going to say and being able to like, I feel like you're a person who can also be witty. Like if they say something crazy, you can be like, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, if, but don't swim anybody ever comes to you with that please take that idea i think you can do something yeah i think i'm i th i mean i i am impressed when people can do that and just go up to people and talk to them i feel like i'm a little too shy to do that <laughs> but i do i do appreciate when people can do that i'm like you though like i'm a very shy reserved person but it's like i'm almost amplified as a character i'm like me times 10 in like a character personified and uh, it's almost like improv because when they say something I have to come up with a joke like that and I feel like I don't know man I think you could do something with that so if you if that's ever offered to you one of these days at least give it a thought because I think it'd be all right <laughs> I'll try it um but yeah how I found you going back to that so uh <clears throat> you're good yeah, how I found you, uh, I think I was on YouTube. I don't even know why I was even suggested this, but it was like top 10 most spookiest or mysterious YouTube channels of all time. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll watch it. Uh, most of them had no intriguing to me, but the one that I did find very interesting was this one YouTube channel. It was called uh, Alice Tutorial. And I was like, I think I've seen this like maybe a long time ago, but let me go back and rewatch it. And I'm watching it. And uh, I think I like, start watching the videos before they explain the premises of the actual videos so i'm uh -huh. watching it i'm like yeah this guy like is he okay is he need help like what's going on so i finished watching the video and i'm like oh okay so this is like a damn near like a social experiment type of thing like you're trying to like get people reactions and i watched it and man i i, I just fell down a wormhole of all of your videos and i just want to start with the alan tutorial thing like like where like that went on for years right yeah, I, I think it may, I don't know off the top of my head. I think there was maybe a year or two break mm. in the middle or something where I wasn't making them. And then you came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, you're I, like, what was, like, I don't know, where, were your, where was your mind at when you thought that that was going to be like a thing you could do? Because I mean, it's brilliant. I, I don't know how you thought of it. I don't know how you thought of that. Like, it's so simple. It's like, you know, be like a distressed human and tell nobody who you are. Like, how did anybody think of that? But it's like, damn, he thought of that. That's what makes him a genius for that. I don't off. I mean, I always say this and now I just talk about it, but I don't often like talking about it as a project because yeah. so much of what is fun about it was people finding it and not 
knowing anything about it. Mm. And, and, and I do, I think for me, that's kind of my favorite way to view something is, you know, you just go see a movie, you don't, you don't know what it is or hear the, or have ever seen the trailer. And, and so you can be surprised that way. Um, and anyways, it was very fun as a project for me to do. I didn't really tell anybody about it when I was doing it and people just stumbled upon it and had either watched it, watched them all or, or didn't, but didn't know who was making it or why. And the reaction from that was, was, what was so exciting and that fueled me making more of it was people speculating and uh, trying to f just figure out if this person was okay. But it, it, it definitely came from <laughs> just watching YouTube tutorials mm -hmm. made by children, which is what I was doing all the time as uh, probably from doing like computer stuff or, you know, 3d animation things. Sometimes you have a question about software and you're, you can't find, an easy answer but you can find a youtube tutorial at least at the time I, that's how i was learning a lot of this stuff and it was always a child it was always some young child <laughs> who was teaching me some complicated thing and it was it was it, it became funny to me yeah and it and i think that project was just a way for me to when i started it i, I didn't have grand designs on where it would go or or, or anything from the beginning it was just a fun activity for me to do for myself and maybe my close friends like you know i would just go do this and, it, and i and i thought about it a lot like a sketchbook where or just just a way to keep keep my brain creative while i was not making a big project i could do this i would make one every day basically and i wouldn't be so critical about it i would just upload it and it, and it became it grew into something much, much larger. Um, but I had no idea that would happen. And, and I, I feel like it's, it's helpful to have a couple projects like that where you don't tell people about it. You just do it as a practice and hope, hope it inspires something else. Or maybe if you're lucky, grows into something bigger on its own. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I, I, got, I know I've I watched, I read a couple of things. I know you don't like get too much into the sauce of things, but I'm interested uh, because with that, you say you didn't tell anybody. So there was no type of like promoting it. That just like blew up, like just by chance, basically. That's crazy. Yeah, I think, I think, I think because they were, maybe because they were tutorials or maybe like tags or keywords on it people were you know were genuinely looking up certain kinds of tutorials and when they would stumble upon it and it would get shared but but it is uh, it is luck because there's millions of weird youtube channels that are authentic that you know have zero views one view and you watch you you stumble upon you're like this is insane how have people not seen this weird weird thing um so I do feel like it, it, it was luck. There was maybe one or two of them that, that got popular and then people started to like share, share it and notice through lines or notice stories that were coming through. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm always very grateful for not just that project, but any project where people invest so much time into digging through it and, and watching it and trying to decode it or find, find messages in there. I think that's, the, you know, a hot, an amazing compliment. I feel very lucky that people are willing to spend so much time on things I've made. Bro, people are making like three hour movies about a 15 minute video you did. Like that's insane to me. I yeah. Mean, did, did a fan find out that Alan Stewart was you or did you come out and say it or how did that happen? That's a good question. I don't remember how people figured out it was me. Maybe maybe when no one followed it, I had maybe posted something. I forget somehow, somehow it was connected to me. Um, but I never really tried to promote it or talk about it even after people found it because, you know, again, I didn't want to ruin the, the fun yeah. of it. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's the fact that people put that much thought into uh, it's, it's almost like, I don't know, like, like I, I say a movie like Get Out or something. Like that movie's an hour, 30, 40 probably. People make two hour videos debunking two, three scenes from the movie. So I guess that can go to the first real, I guess, like a 
uh, outside of the Alan tutorial thing that I've seen of you, and it was May I Please Enter. Now, that was the first thing I seen. That was what, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken? Something like that, two or three years ago, yeah. Two, three years ago. And um, I, I, I read one of the comments before watching it, and I think it was just like, uh, the fact that uh, Adult Swim is giving him this big budget to keep doing these is amazing. I hope they keep doing it. So I'm like, okay, let's let's see if he's still in the trash cans with blood on his feet, teaching people how to do stuff. I'm very interesting. What's going to go on? So that's not what I got. I, I got something that I watched two, three times, and I was trying to figure out what was going on. I'm going to be honest. Still don't completely know what's going on throughout that thing. And I'm not going to ask you too much. I know you don't want to ruin the fun for anybody. But uh, I, I want to know just, to, I guess, like, what, what started that one? Did that come out of an idea? Did that come out of a situation? Out of, like, like, how did that, like, what was that inspired from right there? Um, I was inspired from just being bored and wanting to make something. And, have, again, having, like, little opportunities. So um, I had people who I knew at Adult Swim, and they were fun I knew that they were funding small little web animations or live action shorts. And I was just like, can I send you some ideas? And like a lot of things, it was just like, what would be fun to make? What would they, what would maybe people let me make? So I rattled off a list of little ideas and didn't have, have, have full ideas, just like maybe one sentence and hope that one of them caught their, their eye. And this was, that was for an extremely low budget project called Adult Swim Smalls, where they would fund one to two minute shorts that they could put on YouTube. And one of the nice things about those tiny, tiny budgets was they would let you do weirder stuff. Like if I went and set up a pitch meeting with a network executive for a, like a real show with a real budget, yeah, there's a more formal process. And those, the ideas would have to make sense financially to an executive but with with these little experimental funny videos they they it's less of a risk for a corporation to give you a few thousand dollars to go make something but i once i started writing the idea once they approved like a, a short idea which was just like i go <laughs> into people's houses and host like a TV show, host like a house tour show. Like I think it was something as vague as that. Yeah. But once they approve that idea and you start writing it and getting excited about it, it, it turned into something that was maybe more ambitious than the budget. So I ended up doing a lot more work. Like, you know, it ended up not financially making sense to make that project, but it was also like, I wanted to work with these, these uh, other artists who are the, the, the people in it. They're a Canadian uh, art duo from Toronto called Life of a Craphead. Oh, you talking about the couple? And I met them on uh, a comedy tour with one of the Wham City comedy tours. Mm -hmm. We would like play their their venue in Toronto, and they were so funny and nice. And I always wanted to work with them, so it was just like a little opportunity to put them in something and allow. You know, I wrote them dialogue, but I was also allow. I like allowing actors to improvise. Um, so yeah, it was just a fun quick project that turned into like too much work, but yeah. Something interesting I've noticed about a lot of your films, uh, everybody knows a lot of detailed stuff in there, but things that I'm pretty sure means uh, <laughs> that just threw me off guard. Just like, <laughs> it's not really quick. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, but yeah, something that I realized that probably means nothing at all, but uh, I, I was wondering, is this a conscious effort? You put a lot of interesting clothing in there, like either if it's some cool clothes, some outrageous clothes. I mean, you're just like John Wayne in the uh, in the May I Enter Your House video, and uh, it's it's very interesting to me that the clothing. It's always this one person that has on something wild or something crazy. Is that something that's like is clothing and wardrobe something important to you, or is that just something you just you throw them on anything? It it's important to me. I think sometimes the idea sometimes that's the idea <laughs> sometimes you're you you think about a funny you it, like a character could have a funny name yeah like i have a, a character called officer cranberry and it was just the funny name it was just like that name popped into my head and i was like that's a funny name yeah and sometimes it's a name sometimes it's clothes or sometimes it's a full a full idea or whatever it is but even if clothes aren't the the thing that sparked the idea i do think it's important. When I was in um, college, I took a video art class from a 
artist named Kate Gilmore, who is like a performance artist. Mm -hmm. And she just, you know, put that idea into my head where she was just like, just consider costume. You know, it was just as simple as that. She was just like, I always consider what, what my costume is where she would do these big endurance performances and she would always have a, you know, an interesting outfit on in each thing, or she'd be like, you know, just to add a little bit of color, I always put a little red on my costume or this or that. And when I was in college, everyone's videos in, you know, in this video art class, not everyone, but a lot of people's videos looked like they were made by college students on a college campus. And it bugged me. They'd be like doing, you know, they'd basically be trying to make like matrix yeah. action scenes in their dorm rooms. And I was just like, okay, like this has no, you can't show this to anyone outside of this, this art class because it looks, it's just like who, who wants to see college yeah. kids running around. So for me, I made an effort to disguise myself so that I didn't look like a college kid. And I made an effort to go places that didn't look like a college campus. Um, and it was a very simple, that's a very simple thing I could do, but it immediately made the videos, allowed them to be shown. You could put that, you know, I put those videos on YouTube or something and you wouldn't be like, oh, a college kid made a video. You'd just be like, oh, this is an interesting video. Like one of the videos was I, I wore footy pajamas and I had my friend tape me to a tree in the woods, like up high mm. with like packing tape. And I would cut myself down. Um, and it just looked like woods and some weird guy. You couldn't, and I, you know, you knew I was too old to be wearing like little kids pajamas, but you couldn't, maybe, maybe you couldn't tell I was a college kid. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I always think it's worth putting a little effort into costume, what it says about the character and location, obviously. See, that's interesting because I feel like a common question would be like, oh, well, like what other filmmakers inspire you, which would probably be an interesting question. It really wouldn't. But I think something that actually would be interesting is that you just explained that with saying uh, the teacher was a performance artist, right? So her being a performance artist in that class, those are two things that inspired you. And I feel like people who uh, think on the same or similar wavelength as you are inspired by a lot of oddities and interesting things. So I'm curious of like what humans, I'm not even saying famous people, or what classes or what things or what events or what experiences uh, I think inspired you to have the mind that you do today because you think because a lot of absurd things come out of your brain and onto the film so what do you think inspires you I know a lot, I know this one guy he gets inspired by just going in nature and looking at the the vegetable or not the vegetable but the fruits growing and things like that like that'll bring him crazy ideas so are there any current or past experiences people humans events that you feel have uh you know impact your brain today it's a good question. I mean, it was like I was saying with the tutorial thing, it's just, it came out of whatever I was looking at um, because I just happened to be watching a lot of YouTube tutorials. And I, for, for, I would make a lot of art about um, 3D graphics and CGI graphics and like Hollywood movie special effects. And it was just because it was something I was interested in and I was looking at these images and I thought they were beautiful images because people would, you know, paint themselves a certain way or do all these things so that a computer could see high contrast areas and colors and be able to analyze it. And they were making themselves look this way so that a computer could see them. And it, and it just became interesting. And I think that's true of most, um, any, any artist in any genre, you know, like, the, the thing about like 90s comedians is they're like, my wife told me to do the dishes. And I said, I don't want to do the, you know, like that's just because that's their life. <laughs> it's their lives. They live in the suburbs. They're like, you ever notice how guys like to work in the garage with tools? It's like, that's the thing they're seeing. So that's what they're commenting on. And the thing I was seeing were <laughs> these children making YouTube yeah. videos or these like ridiculous Hollywood special effects behind the scenes making of things that I thought were funny. So that would, that would be inspiring to me. And then, yeah, like this professor I had was a really big inspiration because she opened my eyes to a whole new world of performance art and video art that I just obviously being like a high school student never got exposed to. So that stuff was a big, that, that, that really blew me away. But, you know, before that, I just liked funny TV shows like The Simpsons or, you know, 
all of that stuff. Um, and then after college, it was, you know, just meeting interesting people in Baltimore who were like incredible artists or musicians who were doing weird things that I was just like, wanted to work with these people and make things like on that level. Um, and, and also just now like comedians who I see and I'm just like impressed with, um, or people who I want to work with. So yeah, I don't, I'm never really good at answering the question, which you didn't even ask, which is like, who, who inspires you or, you know, what directors do you look at? Like it's, it's hard to know. I don't keep a running list of that stuff. And I watch a lot of normal, boring stuff. And it's usually the boring, normal stuff that you get a funny idea from, or I do. It's funny because I wrote in my notes, I said, I bet this man YouTube history is ridiculous. And uh, it sounds like it is already with the, the kids and the tutorials and things like that. Like if I was to go, uh, like, like what are things you get recommended on your YouTube that like, I guess is normal for you to see? I don't know. You know, like part of the problem is it, the algorithms of those things. If you look up something because you need to, then you just keep getting recommended that yeah. that stuff. So if I've, you know, if I started researching like a camera I want to look, I want to buy, all my video recommendations are the most boring gearhead camera review videos that I, and then that becomes funny as well. You know, that's just then uh, then I, then I start thinking like, okay, well, what if I start making videos like this because yeah. that's what I'm watching my my wife is actually the one who re, her youtube history is in, is is more insane and she she sometimes makes art art about that so she recently did a um a perform a zoom performance about people who make videos about ceiling fans mm. um and so she follow she is able to find really interesting parts of the internet, sub, subcultures of, of people, sometimes children who are just obsessed with the most specific thing. And I think that's a connection that we both have is we both are obsessive about people who are obsessed with things. Um, but she'll show me some videos that, ha yeah, I just can't believe exist. <laughs> Do you have any? But she, but because of that, she can't really show them to, to people because part of their charm is that no one has seen them. Yeah. Do you have any current obsessions right now? No, but I feel like it's because my, maybe I do. I just can't think of it. I feel like I've just had too much chaos in my <laughs> life or I've just been busy with other things that yeah. I, I don't know what I'm obsessed with at the, mo at the moment, but I'm, you know, that's, a, I feel like I bounce around a lot to different things or I'll be obsessed with something. I'll make things about it or I'll make something in a certain medium or, and then I'll get bored and want to go back to something else or find, or find something else. And I don't always know where that, where I'm obsessed with at the moment. For sure. Um, and, and I guess after watching that one, my next one was uh, the Bear infomercial, which uh, mm -hmm. that, that was like damn near like a movie or something like that was, because I could tell the, I would imagine the budget was a little bit different for that one compared to the first one, because it's like it was shot uh, much differently, um, at least with a different camera. And just the way that that was, Man, I was, hey, I gotta, I gotta give you some claps right there, man. That was some, some good stuff. And once again, I had to watch it a couple times and uh, found myself in the comments picking out little stuff. I was like, whoa, didn't even notice that right there. Uh, like with the, the, the foreshadowing with the woman in the back, that was, I was like, yeah, that guy, <laughs> is he smoking like salvia or something? I don't know what's like, how's he thinking <laughs> of this stuff? Um, but yes, that is, that was amazing. I just had to let you know that off top before we get in that, that is probably, uh, I, was, I don't know. I, was, I, I can't even put it into words. Usually I can put things into words, but I, I find myself uh, having trouble putting certain films you've did into words. And it was, it was really good. Man. Was really thanks. Good. Thanks. That, yeah, that was fun. That was one of the, I mean, that was one of the first times I tried to work in, in a more cinematic way. And it, it was a very collaborative process. Um, and we, we, it was, a small budget by TV standards, but it was a very large budget by like dirty Baltimore warehouse standards. Yeah. Um, so we were able to hire crew and, you know, I worked with my friend Noah Collier, who's been like a, a DP on a lot of things I've made and work with like, you know, a bit nicer equipment and try to really make it feel more cinematic, which also fit the idea. You know, that was core to the idea was that it, 
looked like a commercial at one point and then looked more like a movie as it went on. Um, but yeah, and, and it, the hiding little details are, you know, we only had 10 minutes or whatever it, it was, but we had more <laughs> that we wanted to say. We had more story that we wanted to tell. So it became fun for the writers um, and I to f find other ways to, to tell more story, I guess, and, and to engage and hope and engage with an audience that we didn't know would be there. You know, when we would tell like, the network producers that we were going to hide all these things and we we're going to make this website. They were just like, don't waste your time doing that. Like a million people are going to see it on television. Just focus on the people who are like, maybe 10 people will find the stuff you hide. Just focus on the million people who are going to watch the thing. But we had fun doing it, hiding that stuff. And we were hopeful that people would look into it and pretty, pretty quick. I think, you know, if you, make something that asks questions that is a little ambiguous. It gives people a reason to look for answers and to f put meaning on things where there is meaning or isn't meaning. Um, and we we felt pretty lucky that the response was pretty quickly people digging into it and trying to make sense of it. I don't know how many people are going to understand this, but that approach of you saying that uh like you, you want to cater to the people that are, you know, going to do some research instead of just the people who are going to watch it first watch and only watch on uh, Adult Swim at night. Um, I watch uh, a lot of battle rap. And in battle rap, there's a lot of people who rap to the live audience that's there and they're going to get it or whatever. But some people rap for the camera and for the people at home. So, yo, know, on third or fourth watch, what I'm saying is so coded, you're going to get it and you're going to dissect it. And that's what it feels like the approach you do. Like, this might not be caught on first watch. You're going to have to dissect this and run this back a couple of times. Am I right by saying that? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's like you, <clears throat> hope, you hope that whoever watches it gets something out of it. Yeah. You know, like if I watch one Marvel movie, I, I might, I hopefully will have a good time and be like, that was a fun movie or, or whatever, you know, if I like it. But they that's you know one of those large interconnected universes where it's like if you're a fan if you're like a comic book nerd you will watch it very very differently you'll be like oh that little button over there is actually yeah. like captain magic's hat and like that's more <laughs> that that's that that's fun too so i think it's i i i think it's nice for there to be two audiences for for things and hopefully both both will enjoy it and 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 also you know, hope, I always try to be, me and my, my, my friends, I think of the, as the primary audience, I'm making it for myself and, and hopefully the people who, who I'm thinking about are people who I like as, as my friends and they will hopefully enjoy it too. And then if I'm lucky, a wider audience, and then if I'm really lucky, there's like this intense audience who is really going to like it. Um, but you never know. You're a madman. You are a madman, and I appreciate it, man. You are you, you think on a different level, and it's interesting because when I watched this, the first thing I thought about was I was on a plane, and uh, on the plane I was on I was writing Delta specifically. Delta has a lot of movies, and uh, I think it was like a year ago, whatnot. I was like, all right, I have nothing else to do. Now watch this movie, and it made me think of that. And I don't know if if you've seen this, but I see a lot of parallels between us and that and uh, and and the infomercial movie. Have you seen us? Not yet. It's I, but I have heard that, and it's one of those movies that I've been, you know, meaning to watch. Not just because of that, but I, I, you know, looked good. And but I don't. I don't. I also think there's uh, there's a bit of a tropey thing with the doppelganger idea is not, you know, that unique. But people have. I have. I have heard that. And I, I. I do want to watch it. Good movie. Both, 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 both are very good. And uh, like I said, I, I think that uh, you, well, it was interesting because you said, hopefully, you know, you, you, you get your friends going, then you get a bigger audience going, and then you get an even bigger audience going. Uh, had, do you ever think that, like, I'm going to do this for the mainstream? Or is it always, this is for like my group of friends, and hopefully everybody else likes it? Um, the goal is to always just make something that I, that I think I would like to watch. Mm. Um, but sometimes it depends. Yeah. It depends on the project and it depends also who's funding the project and how much, <laughs> how much they're giving you to make it. 
you have to often please an executive who is trying to please a wide audience. And sometimes that's just a matter of language and how you explain the idea. So it sounds like, oh, that sounds like something people would watch. And then you hope, you know, you find ways to make it close to the thing you want to make, even if you know that <laughs> the thing you want to make is not what an executive really wants you to make. Um, so it depends, it depends on the project. It depends what it's, what it's for. And I think, yeah, some, sometimes I make things that are just supposed to be funny and there aren't hidden messages in them. Um, but once you, once you've made a lot of things where there are little details that do mean something, people watch everything you make and look at every little detail as if it means something. And sometimes it just doesn't. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like the audience that has been so nice and watched my things so critically have given me a leeway to just make things that aren't like a mate aren't uh, you know you want the freedom to make things that aren't amazing yeah that aren't super dense that are just fun um so i try i like to make both and i, I like to go back and forth so, you know in a lot of ways i just get bored of making one th when i make something i get bored of whatever that kind of thing is and i want to make the opposite of that so even if that means making something that looks nice on nice cameras or cinematic then i'll be like well i want to make something that looks noisy and crunchy on a like really crappy camera or on a cell phone um so that was a long-winded answer no you're good you're good and for the people that are diving deep into this do you ever watch these videos where they do this yeah it's it, i've seen some and it's flattering it's it's really rewarding to see people pick up on a lot of the stuff that because we, we you know the the crew that I've worked with, the team, like it's very collaborative and, and, and us hiding all that stuff and it's yeah. so much work. So it is really nice to see them find it and talk about it in a, in a, in, in a pretty smart way. Um, and that, you know, a lot of them talk about it in a way where they know that they can't know the actual answer, which is I think a healthy way to view art. Yeah. Um, and then it can be kind of funny to, see the things that they get wrong mm. or you know maybe there's a continuity error and something was in one shot and then when we cut back it's not there and people put a bunch of significance onto it because we've in the past there has been significance to that sort of thing and they come up with a whole theory based on this one little thing that's wrong and it's valid it, it even though it's kind of funny to the creators and we like like seeing what they've come up with. It's also a very valid interpretation because whatever they saw was in, in the footage and it does have some meaning that does make some sense in the way that they're explaining it. So it's, it's interesting to watch people do that. And I think it goes to people who have maybe schizophrenic tendencies or you know people who have, people, there are some people who can make, who find hidden messages and everything where they aren't there and it makes them go a little crazy yeah. and I, I, I don't, I don't know it. I mean, you have to be, I, I try to be, I don't want to play into that too much. Um, but it's, you know, it just goes to how you view art and what you choose to make meanings of people who can make conspiracy. You know, there's like videos about like back to the future predicts nine 11 and you can see all these hidden me meanings in the, the way the, the logos and all these things. And it's like, yeah, that stuff is there, but it's not, it doesn't actually mean what you think it does but it's interesting to watch how the brain looks for that stuff and can do, find it anywhere. I have to shout out to this guy, Nightmind. He's the, I think he's the most popular one that have made these uh, videos, break it down. I mean, this guy is making damn near uh, James Cameron feature films on your movie. Yeah. I mean, longer shout, than the, yeah, longer than the content that we make is, is his explanation. I have to shout out him because he puts this, for somebody to put that much time into something, is uh that's dedication that's uh, that shows he appreciates what you did so i, I just want to shout that guy because he he, he pointed out a lot of things maybe whether they be true or not i didn't realize them. i was like that's crazy right there and i definitely want to do that work so shout out to that guy right there um and 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 he has a lot of i think he and i guess the reddit community they might have a lot of uh came up with a lot of theories that have been uh i guess basically the standard like oh well yeah this film means this or this means that so without spilling too much of the sauce, because I know you want to do it, 
is there any theories or any like things that are like for sure like people are like yeah well this obviously means that where people are set on that that you actually know is not it no i think it's specific but is there any of those like theories out there that people really believe that actually are not true at all um you know it's been a while since i've delved in and watched that stuff yeah there i like i was saying there are a couple things that are just like people put way too much meaning onto something that's not intentional. Um, like there was one technical issue in one, I'm not, I'm not going to be specific. So this won't maybe be an interesting answer. There was a technical issue in the way we shot something that led to a, one of the main theories being totally based on just the way something looked that wasn't actually right. Um, but it was super interesting. And like I said, valid their theory, like it, it, it still tracked. And it was interesting that they were able to make these connections that weren't there. And that's just what's nice about looking at art is connections that you make. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to have, a, I do, like I was saying, it's nice to have a combination of intentional and unintentional things. And you create an environment where you can watch the art and just enjoy thinking about it. Hopefully if you're someone who's, if it's resonating with you enough that you're going to spend time thinking about it. Oh, man, you, like I said, your, your mind is amazing. I don't want to keep you for too long, but before I do, uh, before we get out of here, I do have to talk about one more film and uh, get into a couple of fan questions and I'll, I'll let you go and take a little power nap, man. We, we need those. Uh, uh, and they would be, this house has people in it. Am I saying that right? Is the house has people in this house? Has this house has people in it, yeah. Um, is that the film that has the most, I guess, meaning like, small detail in it um and like you said you you have other videos where i feel like maybe there's not too much detail like like the codex video that's that, the the uh that feels like a fun video it feels like you're just yeah. having fun in the woods and you have these videos like uh this house has people in it and uh something that i wouldn't even think about asking until you just brought this up uh were you the one who made the the game that's attached to the uh thing oh because you said you did the 3d things so i didn't know if you were uh, also like making the games and things like that. I didn't know if that was a uh, you're doing or maybe somebody else in the- On the website, you yeah, mean? On the website, yeah. That was Dina Kelberman, my wife, who oh. she is, I would say the mastermind of all of the ARG, the website of things. She would program, she would make all those websites and we would all brainstorm and hide things, but she would put in a lot of the, the uh, labor of putting it together and, and, and coming up with a lot of that stuff. And so, she, yeah, it was one of those things where we're like, it would be funny if there was a playable game in here. And she was just like, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> and she kind of took it on herself. I did some of the art for it, but she did the programming. No, that was, that was, and that was the bigot, that project, uh, this has its people and it was the, had the most hidden information and it became, and it was because like the first infomercial I did with, um, with my co-director Ben O'Brien was just like a funny parody of an infomercial, but it had a little website and people found some hidden things on there. And so we got excited about that. So then the next thing was this, the unedited footage of a bear. And it was fun making a website for that. So we're like, let's make a bigger website for this where we hide even more stuff. And we had more time to really plan it to think how it would fit into the show. And then that went, you know, the audience reaction to that was so in depth that we, for the third one, this has this people in it, we just fully committed to doing a, a real ARG. And we, you know, one of the hard things about shooting for me is like when there's a big budget is because you're paying everyone a day rate, you only have three days to shoot the whole thing or two days, you know, whatever it is, you don't want to waste money. So you don't have any time. And then you don't have any creative time to think of new ideas. Cause you're just like, we have to stick to this, that we're losing daylight. We have to, shoot this much in a day. And I always have a hard time with that because the creative process I like the best is like what I was saying with the Allen tutorial thing where it's like you're making it slowly and you're getting new ideas as you're making it and you're thinking, oh, this would be fun. Now that I've seen this reaction or this or that, it's giving me a new idea, a new idea and it, and it, and it snowballs. So with this has people in it, with that in mind, we shot it cheaply on security cameras. Mm. And we made it so instead of having a three days or a day to shoot it, we book this house and these actors for a week and have a very minimal crew and rig up the house with security cameras. 
and we would have these, I, these ARG ideas built in from the beginning, but we would also allow ourselves room to explore and play and come up with new ideas. So we actually shot like the main episode, the 11 minute episode in the first two days probably. And then we had like three other full days in this house to just shoot hidden content for the website that we had some planned and some unplanned. And we ended up shooting, there's basically two hours of hidden videos you can find, um, even though the thing that aired on TV was 11 minutes. And again, it was something that I think drove the, <laughs> the network people a little crazy. We were like, why are you spending so much time on this thing no one's gonna see? But we were very happy, people, people saw it. Not bad. Sometimes people don't see the vision, and I'm glad. I'm glad you kept it going, man, because that was that was very interesting. And I feel like one thing that I like about all your films that they may have these crazy deep meanings. They might be horror. All of them, I can say, all of them that I've seen, I've at least chuckled. I've at least got a, a laugh out of it. And I think the the laugh that I got out of uh, the the main laugh I got out of the the people has house in it is when everything is falling apart, girls falling through the floor, and everybody's going crazy. I love that the baby's just like, all right, I'm out of here. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I'm, that made me laugh. I was like, that is, that was good stuff right there. So yeah, yeah the comedy that you put in there, I, I think is very appreciated for sure. Man. Cool. Thank you. Um, and yeah, uh, before we got out of here, get a couple fan questions and uh, we'll be out of here. Uh, let's see. Where was that one at? Uh, somebody said uh, H, H House. He says, ask him if we're getting the Alan Tutorial movie. Uh. I said I would do, well, no, I'm not going to say, I, in the past I had said I would do it if I could get Shia LaBeouf to play me mm. in it, because people on the street will sometimes say that I look like Shia LaBeouf. I was thinking that in my head this whole time, but yeah. Yeah. But now I don't think I would, I don't think I would work with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. So I don't, I, there's no plans for, for this project at the current moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, can't find the question, but I, remember, I can't find the exact question, but I remember somebody said, uh, are you inspired by, uh, by, uh, damn, where's that question at? Uh, surrealist. Yeah. Are you, are you inspired by surrealist elements at all? Oh, surreal, surrealism yeah. in general. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I, appre I always appreciate things that are surreal in, on some level. Sometimes it's just, you know, there's a level of surrealism where it's, there's nothing to grasp. You see, some things are just, there's not enough story or narrative. It's just trippy. Yeah. And I, do, I lose interest because I, I need a little something to give me a reason why I'm watching it. Not always. Um, but I always appreciate things that are more ambiguous. But sure. I'm not like looking at surrealist paintings and yeah. being like, "Ooh, I should, I should do that." <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, and that's and that's it, man. I, I know you you mentioned uh, that you have a couple films coming in the in the near future. I don't know if you uh, want to talk about that at all, or if you want to promote that. But uh, if so, uh, any last words you have to say, let it be known. I have nothing else to say, but it has been nice to talk to you. And I enjoy your grandfather clock and green wall and your, and your shower cap. Well, hey, I appreciate everybody watching. I uh, appreciate you sitting here. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters are going to hate. Players are going to play. And you guys holler at your boy. And that. Uh,